Good morning. It's winter time here in the Pacific Northwest, where I live. One of my favorite times of year. It's nice and dark. We're getting close to the winter solstice. I'm not one of those who gets excited about the coming light. I actually like these days before when it's the coming dark. There's something about being in the woods that I find comforting. And maybe it's because I've grown up here and because I spent a lot of time as a kid, as a teenager wandering the woods. But there's something about being in the tr with the trees, with the fog or the rain, the wet, the green, the gray, the lushness of it. It makes me feel held. And it reminds me that there's so much more for me to experience when I slow down. And I, I can't help but be slowed down in this season. Which brings me to the topic of intimacy. Most of the time when people use the word intimacy or often, it's as a euphemism for sex. But I would put to you, I would ask you the question, how many times, how many times when you are being sexual do you actually feel intimacy? Or how many times when you are feeling wide open are you actually feeling like you want to have a sexual engagement with somebody? They're not the same. And they, when, they're, when they're together, they're beautiful. But I think so often in this culture, we, we confuse them. So this winter, my colleague Sarah Anderson and I are going to be hosting a retreat for couples, the Sacred Arts of Intimacy, which I'm hoping will help people connect, these couples connect in a, a very deep way when, when they do connect sexually, but I also hope that it helps them find a way of knowing each other and themselves more deeply in a way that, at least on the face of it, has nothing to do with sex. Now, I dance tango, and I make a lot of allusions to tango in what I'm writing. And part of that is because I feel like tango is the, the best expression that I've experienced of that risk-taking together that may lead to intimacy. And I think that's a big part of it is that the risk taking together and the and the trust. So for me, dancing tango is because it's an improvised dance, because we don't really talk, we make things up as we go along based on what each other's body is saying. And and my role, because I'm primarily dancing the lead is to hold that a, a deep space of awareness so that my follow can feel safe enough to flow into how their body wants to move. Whether they're a man or a woman, when I've been a follow, that's, that's what I enjoy, is when I feel that I'm being held in a way that I just start to move in ways that I can't even... I can't even imagine. I'm being opened up into a place that that's new to me or that's that's somewhere deeper than I usually go. And and that to me is what I want in my not in all of my relationships, but in the relationships with the people I love. I want to be able to create and hold spaces where those individuals, whether it's and the woman I love, whether it's my mother, whether it's my sister, whether it's my good friends, men, whether it's my granddaughters, my daughters, my sons, 
places where they can feel like it's okay just to be themselves in, in a way that they've never imagined. And that I will love them and hold them in that space without making demands on them, without having expectations. To me, that's an important part of this whole intimacy thing is to have my heart open, to be so vulnerable that the other person feels like it's safe, feels that it is safe to be vulnerable. And again, when that happens in a romantic sexual relationship, that's one of the most beautiful places that relationship can go, but really there has to be this trust. And that trust and this feeling that we often ascribe to sexuality, that can happen in all kinds of ways. And, and for us as masculine identified men, and maybe just men generally, because of how we tend to be wired sexually or how the culture trains us sexually, we miss a whole part of this. And we're so often at odds with our feminine partners who have a deeper feeling for this than most of us men and with whom we as men often are frustrated because we don't slow down enough. We haven't learned how to hold our own vulnerability enough to be able to hold their vulnerability and begin to see and feel just how beautiful that is. So these are my Sunday morning thoughts today. Uh, thank you for listening. If you've got questions, um, please send me an email at rev.hans at sacredbodies.ca or you can send me a message through sacredbodies.ca. There's a, um, a message button there. And we're getting close to the Christmas season. We're in the midst of the festive season. All kinds of cultures have their festivities at this closing of the year. So wherever you are and however you are organized in terms of your life, in terms of your, your heart, I hope that you feel some of the peace and the and the joy and, and just the, the good feeling inside yourself that I come to associate with this time of year. Thanks for watching.